Hey, welcome back. I've been gone forever. I'm sorry. I'm so busy. Three kids swamping me. So, but I did want to show you this great project that I was inspired to do by a recent client. Um, that I went to and also at home and Nikki has a system sort of like this too so I was at a client's home and I was helping her and I was looking around her home she was really really organized so I didn't really know why she needed me but I did notice a few things that were laying around were homeless items and I realized I have the same issues in my home and I'm seeing that in almost every home that I'm going into it's the in-out things that are homeless. And I'll give you some examples. Things you want to return, things that need to be fixed, um, things that, you know, projects that you haven't yet completed but you need to in the immediate future. Those type of things are creating clutter around our home. So inspired by this client, I decided to turn, I have this unfinished room. When you first come into my home, we come in through the garage, which is our mud room, which is awesome. But then we have my craft room, which, is just a disgusting unfinished room which we will be finishing in a few years but in the meantime it's just sort of left you know neglected so I wasn't utilizing it because it wasn't a finished room in my house but I decided to spend just a little bit of money and create an in-out system so check out what I did I'll show you the before and then I'll show you the after so here is the after I had this wallpaper already because I love recovering diaper boxes and other sturdy boxes with wallpaper. So I had all this wallpaper on hand so I decided just to wallpaper this little corner here with this great wallpaper. A lot of people ask me how do you wallpaper, how do you recover diaper boxes and wallpaper? It's really easy. You just simply, I don't even always wet it, <laughs> I just simply put a little bit of white glue mixed with water on a paintbrush after I've measured it and then simply wrap the box like you would a present. And then having the little watery glue mixture makes it stick and you've got a really beautiful sturdy box. So anyways, I had some leftovers so I used the leftovers to just sort of wallpaper up this corner. You can see the floor here isn't finished. I mean, it's something that we are completely redoing in about a year, so I didn't go crazy. Um, okay, let's talk first about the in-out system. It's awesome! So I have a spot for in, which would be things that I bring home that I need uh, to find a spot for, flowers I wanna read, magazines I wanna read, things like that, not the mail because I do have a great mail system, but other things. We always come in and we have little things that we need to find homes for. So I have this great now in basket. Then I have my out basket. And this is where I put things that I need to return to the store, a gift that I've had forever for my father-in-law. I'm terrible, <laughs> I need to give to him. And then I have these great donate bin here. I do have systems in my kids' closets for stuff for them, but I was always tossing out I'm terrible tossing out things or turning it into rags that my like that were mine and my husband's because I was so <laughs> lazy and if it wasn't a lot I didn't have a place to put it or I would just like ride around in my car for the end of time it was a nightmare anyways now I have these two great baskets for donate I really recommend it if nothing else having a designated donation box in your home is essential and then I have these two cubbies which I decided to use for books I'm a big reader I love to borrow so these are all the ones I've borrowed and read I need to return and these are all the ones that I've read that I want to lend to somebody so yeah my in out system and then I simply hug these hooks for my husband's briefcase, he, he puts his hats here. I don't know why he's got another spot for hats, but anyways, my purse. And then this great pegboard for stuff that I need to get while I'm walking out the door. So this would be a good spot for receipts of things you wanna return. I have a prescription I need to fill. I've got a gift card I need a pedicure so badly it's not even funny. <laughs> so that's a visual reminder, plus the little cork board. These were really easy to cover. Again, these were $5 cork boards, and I got all this fabric at Walmart for two dollars they have these color swatches so I was able to create lots of different patterns and fun colors all within the purple and black and white scheme and everything I purchased I got from Walmart this is one of these great bulletin like ribbon boards it's simply hot glue here I'll show you the hat to you at the end if you want to know how to make this I did do a how-to tutorial at the end plus I'll show you the before and after at the end 
um, really easy, but this I wanted to create for, you know when you get cards from people in the mail, or you get Christmas cards, or you get things like that that you want to keep photos of nieces and nephews and things like that. This is such a great place to sort of stick those little memorabilia. I never had a spot for that before. Usually that would go on someone's fridge. I am like a fridge clear Nazi, so I wouldn't even display that stuff. I'm terrible, but now I have a great spot. Plus I had this little bin. It was really like green and ugly. I quickly spray painted it, added some ribbon because I don't know I'm a nerd like that, and it's a spot for our keys glasses, stuff like that. So I'm loving this in-out system. I do have another in-out system, like a landing strip in the garage. I will show you that um, maybe tomorrow. I'll do a video about that. But this is my new in-out system. And here is the rest of my craft room. Tidied up. It was horrible before. <laughs> um, yeah, I just cleaned it up a little bit. We have the extra fridge in here. And here's another cool thing that I implemented in this room. This is my new project box. Usually when I have things I want to work on, I'm always inspired to do new projects. I would just lay them on the counter or leave them on the table or <laughs> put them somewhere. So I had this old trunk in the girls' toy room, but I simply stole it back. And now this is my to-do project box. I need to re-glue this. I need to fix a clip that's in here. Um, I wanted to make another craft box out of here. I have to finish my daughter's binder. I want to do something with this this baby shadow box. I wanted to paint that for Milo's room. There's all these projects that I want to do that I just haven't found the time to do. So right in my craft room I had this old trunk. You can use any, even a Rubbermaid tote. When I find some time and before I start a new project, I'm going to go to my project box and finish one out of there. Um, I can show you how I did these pictures after <laughs> at the end of the video. It's going to be a long video, obviously. I'll throw all this stuff in, but there you go. Um, my mini craft room makeover inspired by a client um, so I could have an in-out system that's really, really functional. I'm loving it. I absolutely recommend you find a little spot in your home for an in-out system too. Maybe right in your entranceway, maybe your entranceway closet, maybe a spot in your garage, who knows? But we all need one and it's such a useful tool. That's your tip, we'll see you next time. So this is my craft room. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. It, it, it's just like this unfinished room that is in the basement. We don't really use it much for anything. We do use our garage as a mudroom, so that's the garage door where you come in. And this is sort of it. Junky, yucky craft room. <laughs> so I'm giving it a quick little makeover. We are redoing this for my 35th birthday, which I'm not even close yet. No, no, a year and a half from now, we'll be redoing this room. But I still want to be... <sighs> I want to like feel inspired when I'm in here. So I'm spending just a little bit of money, around $100, to give it a quick mini facelift. And I also want to create right here um, an in-out system, like a landing strip in-out system because I don't have a functional in-out system right now and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I just wanted to show you the before, da da da, it's pretty disgusting, and uh, show you the after. So they have these cardboard backs that go on the closet made shelf that I got um, for a little console table and I just want to add craft paper to it and the great thing is the scrapbooking paper that I already had is exactly the same size. So no cutting. So all I'm going to do is apply a little spray adhesive because I'm super lazy push it down and then attach this to the back. Okay, so I'm trying to fill the walls with some color and I wanted to make one of these fabric boards. I think I'm overthinking this. But anyways, I had an old canvas picture. It was hideous. I tried my hand at painting and didn't turn out. So I, I covered it with fabric and I love getting these fabric pieces. Excuse my mess here. I'm 
I'm creating uh, from Walmart. There's like, I don't know, they're two box and you get like all these swatches. So I got all the purpley ones with purple that are purple, black and white because that's kind of the theme I was going with with this room. Uh, and this budget budget thing and it had all this ribbon because I like to make hair bows for my girls so I think you just like crisscross it I don't know I can't push a pin through here permanently because it's um, it's just a canvas picture so it's not gonna work so I just cut strips first I covered this with fabric which was really really easy I just literally hot glued it on the bottom half then I cut some strips of purple um, ribbon and I'm just laying them across I don't know there must be a I've, I, I should really google it but I'm just going for it how you get the crisscross pattern this is how it's going to look and then what I'm gonna do to hold it in place while I glue it is just put um, some push pins on the crisscrosses here and then I think I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue afterwards to actually hold it and then maybe bejewel it or some kind of crazy bling it out. Anyways, um, this is a project that's, because I already had the ribbon, it's going to cost me two bucks. Love that. So I'll show you what the art looked like to begin with. Um, that is crushed, uh, <laughs> crushed eggshells. I... I just, I covered this canvas, these two canvases with, um, you see how it's all kind of textured -y like that? I covered it with drywall mud and then I actually pushed in stamps that my kids have to make different words. Then I rubbed on paint and then I washed it off. So it's like this aqua and browny type color. But now I want to change it to purple. So I like using these, um tear away pads because it's just so much easier you can throw it out after and I've tried every kind of paint I've tried watercolor which just drip all over I've tried oil it takes way too long to dry so I just use cheap dollar store acrylics I am in no way an artist I just do this for fun but I'm gonna add some purple to this so it matches the room okay so I'm done it's so dark in here I should have videoed it lighter um it literally took me five minutes like literally literally took me five minutes it is what it is it's not a masterpiece but it's purple and that's all I cared about I use this sponge to sponge it all purple and then I use these putty knives things to scrape on the black and the metallic literally five minutes <laughs> whatever it's an unfinished craft room it's purple there you have it